Hallelujah. 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 Good evening and welcome to our day six of praying and fasting to take your place in the new year. I mean, it's day six now. It's a 10 days fast and this is the sixth day of this um, fasting and praying. And um, as we meditate upon this, um, what the Lord is saying, we begin to appreciate why he's led us into this fast. As we go through each day, through the prayers, we begin to appreciate more and more, you know, why he has called us into this fast. He's called us to take our place, to for us to be grounded in, in this year so that our feet is solid on ground, that we are not locked out of the air, that we, are, we know his purpose for the year and that the enemy does not um, act with us in this year hallelujah yesterday's word was um faith that moves everything and lord asked us to pray concerning his word that was prepared for us for the year 2023 there's a word for you there's a word for your family there's a word for your nation there's a word that god releases at every gate of a season the bible tells us in psalm 109 105 let me read it Psalm 105, verse 19, talking about the faith that moves mountains. And yesterday we said, until your word comes, mountains cannot move. And when the word of God concerning you, you pray concerning it. And that word, immediately you begin to pray for the word of the Lord for your life, for the new year. You take that posture of fasting and praying, and you fulfill all righteousness. Um, there will be movement in the heavens, in the spirit. In Psalm 105, verse 19, it says, Until the time that his word came. Look at those two things. Time, word. Hey, hallelujah. Until the time that his word came. Your word is timed. The word of the Lord for your lifting. The word of the Lord for your deliverance. The word of the Lord for your, for your promotion. It, it has a time line in the realm of the spirit and so as we step into 2023 which is the third year in the, of the third decade of the third millennium after the resurrection of christ jesus there's going to be shots of rising hallelujah there's going to be some power play and when that time comes there's a word that is released for your sake and i'm so excited hallelujah so the lord asks us to pray for the word that is appointed for us just like we read here in Psalm 105, verse 19, that until the time, there are some things that you can never do until the time. And even when the time comes, there must be a word. Come on, hallelujah. Even when the time comes, you've got to locate the word. You've got to posture for the word. Faith comes by hearing. You cannot say you have faith until you've heard a word. A lot of people are presumptuous. The presumptions about marriage, presumptions about ministry, presumptions about business, presumptions about traveling, about relocating, about jobs, about they see the business that is making money now. They say, what business is making money? Oh, this is the business. They just jump into it. No, you don't have a word for it. Even if you do that business and you make money, you will not please God. You will be a gate of hell and not a gate of heaven because you don't have a word for it. You don't have an authorization to rule and to advance the kingdom of God. So in 2023, it's important that you know there is a word. Every time has a word appointed to it. And Psalm 105 tells us here, until the time that his word came, I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that your word that was perfectly tailored for you will come for you in 2023. I pray that the heavens, the Lord was speaking to me yesterday. He said, even God himself, I am moved by my word when i see my word in your life when i hear my word from your mouth hallelujah part of your prayer this year lord let your word locate me let your word be in my mouth is i will put my word in your mouth father when i pray grant me utterances according to your word i want to plead with you we've done we've done christianity blindly we've done christianity without being prophetically minded there are several strategic objectives for the church Several. I'm not talking about the vision of the church. I'm not talking about the mission of the church. I'm talking about the seven strategic objective of the church. The first strategic objective of the church 
is to raise sons to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The second strategic objective of the church is to activate the, 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 the priesthood of the saint. Because you are, after your sonship, the next most important thing about your, about your life as a Christian is your priesthood. But many Christians can be in church, can be born again, and they have no clue about their priesthood, about the, the, the conditions for your priesthood. You cannot be a priest and you are drinking anyhow. It's not possible. Priesthood has conditions. You can't be a priest and you are flirting and having sexual relationships anyway. You can't be a priest and you, uh, 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 you all kinds of people are in your life. No, your pri the priest has honor. So as you must see yourself as a priest. It's not until you, you are called a pastor. No, even when you are in Christ, you are a priest. So the second most important strategic objective of the church is to activate the priesthood of the believer. Then you have assembling a prophetic-minded people. That's one of the seven strategic objectives. As to assemble what a prophetic-minded people. So the church must be people who are prophetically minded, apostolically led. They must understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. As they come into a new year, come into a new season, as they come into a territory, as they go into a marriage, as they come into a season, what is the Spirit of the Lord saying? Now, if you don't have a people who are prophetically minded, or if you don't have a minister who is conscious that the people of God under his leadership are prophetically minded, then the opposite will be the case. They'll be carnally minded. They will be, they will be opinionally minded. They'll be mindful of the opinions of men, opinions of the world, not the opinions, not the prophecy of the Spirit, not the speakings of the Spirit. And so that's why we begin a new season, a new year, probing, praying, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. It's one of the strategic objectives of the church. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for your mercy upon us, your grace and your goodness upon us. We want to thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to the six of this fasting and praying. You've been so good to us. You've blessed us. You've made us to be conscious of our place. You've made us to be conscious of the season that we are in, that we are in the third year of the third decade of the third millennium after the resurrection of Christ. That needs a hallelujah shout. That is a revelation that we need to jump at and say, hey, for such a time as this was I born. What is it I was born for? What is it that is set for me in the realm of the spirit? Lord, we want to thank you for not allowing this to go over our head, for not allowing us to be oblivious of the time that it is. Because the Bible says you make all things beautiful in your time. The Bible tells us in Psalm 105 verse 19 that until the time his word came, there is a word for a time. And now that we have come to this time, this third year of the third decade in the third millennium, there is a word for this time for us. Help us to be aligned to it. Help us to be awakened to it. Let your word take a hold of us. Let your word prepare for us. Let it take a hold of our day. Take a hold of our land. Take a hold of our heavens. Your word, your word, let it take a hold. Your word, let it take a hold of us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Remove from us all those who are a barrier to the word of the Lord from our life. Remove us from the environments that would not allow us to, to hear the word of the Lord. Remove us from the relationships that dull or steal or hinder the word of God from locating us. Thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I bring the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over everyone watching and over everyone that is taking note of this broadcast. I invoke the speakings of the blood of Jesus into the waters, the heavens, the mountains, the regions of darkness, the land, the trees, all creation. I bring them subject to the voice of the blood of Jesus concerning this broadcast. Let it be profitable to your people. Let it advance your purpose in our lives. Let it let there be understanding from this word. Let there be results. Let there be fruits that abide from this ministration, from this prayer session. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Today, our focus is understanding the place 
of thrones and altars in the new year. The place of thrones and altars. Come with me to Revelation chapter 5. In Revelations, I'll just go through Revelation chapter 5, 6, and 8 quickly. There are a lot of things that we need to pick from those uh, scriptures. Revelations, it's important to understand pattern. God is not just interested in you being successful, being married, having a job, making money. Unbelievers do that. God is interested in who you are becoming. You can be making money, but you are so disloyal. You are not loyal. You are a liar. You can be married, but how you got married. Your testimony is more important than your breakthrough. Come on. Your testimony is more important than your breakthrough. Some people break through at all costs. They will even go to the devil. They will even go to witch doctors to get a breakthrough. Your testimony is more important than your breakthrough. Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the hand, in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written with, within and on the back seat, side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? Now, the book here is the sea of all of the universe. The book here contains the seals. The seals are the seasons and the activities within the seasons that are to come, the history, hallelujah, that is to come. And it be, until the seal is broken, the seasons can be released. But look at where it begins. Every season, listen to this, and write it down. Look at it. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Our focus today is the place of thrones and altars in seasons and new years. When you come to a new year, whether it's your birthday, your marriage anniversary, or a new year in the calendar of the uh, Passover, or, you know, you, you've got to understand that the, the protocol for you to be able to enter that season or to enter the new year is two places, thrones and altars. So a, a season or a new year is released from a throne and midwifed through altars. Let me say that again. A new year or a new season is released from throne, from a throne or from the throne. And it is midwifed through altars. I will show you from the Bible. Because you need to understand patterns. God is more interested in what you are becoming than what you, what you are achieving. God is more interested in your testimony than in your breakthrough. So if your testimony does not follow the pattern of the word of God, God is not interested in it. Seasons are released from the throne and they are midwifed through altars. So in Revelation chapter 5, we see that on the throne, the book for the season, the book that contains seals, that contains seasons, is on the throne. Now, in Revelation chapter 6, let me read it. The one who breaks the seal is Jesus. And that seal is broken from the throne. I read from the, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. When the lamb opened one of the seals. Now, the story begins from Revelation chapter 5, and it begins from the throne. So, he that sits on the throne, he takes the book. He breaks the seal in Revelation 6 verse 1. And then activities begin. Action begins. So, every time you come into a new year, you must come before the throne of God. You can't just be excited about who sent you New Year gift, who sent you New Year wish. That is not what you are looking for. That's why when I come to a birthday, my wife knows when I'm coming into a birthday of my life, or it's not about the gifts. It's not. It's first to make sure I enter the season to stand before the throne. We fast, we pray because we know that our season or our New Year must be released from what the throne. 
the throne. So you must stand before the throne. Now, I've, I've, I've laid two principles. Revelation chapter 5, we see a throne. Revelation chapter 6, we see this, this, the seal. Come to Revelation chapter 8. Tell you that seasons are released through thrones, midwife, through altars. I read Revelation chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, who is opening the seal? The Lord Jesus. That's what we read in Revelation chapter 6. And when he had opened, because some of you read these things, you don't, put, you don't contextualize it. Hallelujah. Some of you don't, okay, I just read it because pastor said read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation every year. Okay, let's contextualize it. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels we stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar from the throne to the altar. From the throne to the altar. Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there giving unto him much incense, which he should offer with the prayer of all the saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. It's important to understand when, when you come into a new year, you come into a new season, the, the things that control years and season is thrones and altars. Thrones and altars. That is on the side of God. Now, in the kingdom of darkness, the things that resist years, that resist a new year, that resist a new season, is also thrones and altars. If you come with me to, to Exodus, when we begin to see, it is in the book of Exodus that we begin to see the seasons of God's people being contested. And the first place we see the season of God's people being contested is in the book of Exodus. So God sends Moses to go and release the children of Israel into a new prophetic season, into a new year. Because God said in Revelation chapter 12, uh, Exodus chapter 12, that this shall be unto you a new year, a new season. But where do we find opposition to the new year and to the new season of God's people, it is the throne of Pharaoh and the altars of his priests, Janus and Jambres, the magicians that were doing the, the, the witchcraft to try to hinder the word of the Lord. There is the word of God for you in 2023. The throne room has spoken. The altar in heaven is responding. But you've got to understand that there is a warfare on the earth from the thrones of darkness and from where also the, the, the altars of darkness. So when you come into a new year, when you come into a new season, you've got to raise up prayers. You've got to pray against the activities of thrones against the active activities of altars that are opposing the river shakan somebody should be shouting because this is why many of us sometimes we are not able to really maximize the things that god wants because we don't we 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 are throwing punches but not accurate not targeted your prayer needs to be targeted you need to start your new year and your new season from the throne of god and from the altar of sacrifice. You must make sure you are in the place of altar. Your own altar, your first altar is your body as a living sacrifice. Your second altar, the seed on your altar, is your first fruit. Because every altar desires sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't follow the protocol, the year will come and go. You will not be able to take your place in it. You will not have a voice in the year. You do not have impact in the air because you've not understood the principles of thrones and altars in the realm of the spirit and how to make sure that your own altar as you stand before the throne because take Daniel chapter 9. A new season was upon the land of Israel. Seven years of captivity was being overturned. What happened? When Daniel began to pray, the angel said to Daniel that from the day you began to throne, pray, I was sent from the throne room of God. He was sent from the throne room of God. But what happened? The Bible tells us the prince of Pasha. Now, princes come from where? 
princes are operating from throne mandate. Let me say that again. Princes operate from mandate from a throne. The prince of Pasha is operating from the throne of the power of the of, of, of the of the of the God of this world. And he's opposing the new season. He's opposing the new year that God has released for his people. That that Daniel is praying about. Daniel is on an altar of sacrifice. He's in a 21 days fast. I prophesy over your life that your altar will not be will not be weak. I was in a prayer recently. As we were praying, the Lord gave me a word. He said, The altar, the altar of this ministry, the altar, the altar must not lose its place. The altar must not lose its its um its tokens. But he allowed the particular token we've not been doing under altar. I said, guys, this 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 altar, there's the token that is missing on it that we've not corporately observed on the altar. If your altar is not standing at the new year, you don't have a place. And the thing that is required on your altar, you as a living sacrifice, holiness, righteousness, prayer, and fasting, first fruit is part of what makes your altar to shoot up. When you come to a new year. Without your altar on earth, you can't midwife a new year. You can't successfully midwife it. You will not be able to midwife. You will get the crumbs if you get anything. Crumbs of the year. Crumbs. And many people are getting spiritual crumbs. Getting blessings that are crumbs. God said, I have much more for you. But you've not taken your place. You've not fought for your place. In, 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 in 2 Timothy uh, 1 verse 18, Paul says to Timothy, he said, concerning the prophecy that has gone before you, make sure you do a, a good warfare. You've not contested for the prophecy of your, of your year, your birthday year, your marriage anniversary year, your children's birthday, your, your ministry birthday, your business birthday. You've not contested for the prophecy. You've not come to the place of altar. You've not come to the place of throne. Adokemos disqualified. You are not able to stand. You've not met the terms and the conditions for the new year. So this is what we see. That the angel, does, he hears a word from the throne. He goes to the altar. It is altar to altar. And so the believers that are the Bible says it carries the prayer of the saints, prayer offered in altars, and releases it from the altar. This fast is a sacrifice on our altar. The seed that you are giving is a sacrifice on your altar. As you pray for your place in 2023, you must understand that heaven has already heard. Heaven has prepared 2023. As we come into the year, we come in in prayer. We come in. People say, why well, must I fast in the new year? There are some powers. Jesus said this one will not move. But by fasting. There are some, especially when you are in that powerful season, where you are about to fulfill a great purpose in God. When you are about to fulfill a great destiny in God, Satan knows what is in the new year for you. He knows, just like he knew what was in the new year for the children of Israel. And he began to release throne of Pharaoh to oppose it. He raised up Janus and Jambres, who were false prophets, who were doing magic to contend against what the throne of grace, what the throne of heaven was saying. Heaven has spoken positively about you in 2023. The, the angels have been dispatched for your 2023, but there are thrones of darkness. There are altars of darkness that are standing against your place, that are standing against your miracles. Hey, laba, shikiri, laba, shiketo, laba. Just, what are you? Light. There are powers of darkness that are standing against your 2023 that you need to pray against, that you need to rise against, that you need to contend against. There are powers of darkness 
that don't want you to see the miracles, that don't want you to see the things that God has prepared for you. In the case of Daniel, it took 21 days. For some people, it's been 21 years of a struggle, of resistance in the heavenly places, thrones of darkness and altars of darkness that are warring against you. So when you pray, I, you know, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. But you need to know where they are. You need to know you are dealing with thrones and you are dealing with altars. Thrones in heavenly places. Thrones in the waters. Thrones of powers. Thrones of strong men. Altars of evil priests. Territorial prison. Household witchcraft. Those are the altars and the thrones that are resisting your season. That are resisting your blessing in the new year. You've got to know where the battle line has been drawn. You've got to know where the enemy has staked the place against you. You've got to know that the thing that is resisting you from taking it, that is why God says fast. That is why God says, bring me a first fruit. Let me tell you, there are some things prayer will answer. There are some things fasting will answer. There are some things first fruit seed will answer. There are some things right living will answer. There are some things Forgiveness will answer. There are some things living, separating from some people will answer for you. There are different things that answer to different things that will make your prayer to be powerful. If you don't have those things, you are not willing to fast. You are not willing to pray. You are not willing to forgive. You are, willing to, you are not willing to let go. You are not willing to give first fruit. You are not willing. When you don't, you are not willing. Your altar doesn't have the power. Your altar is, doesn't have the strength to midwife. It's a battle of altars. It's a battle of altars. Pharaoh will leave his throne and go to the river and go and raise sacrifices to maintain his kingdom, to maintain his subjects. There are people who consider you their subject. There are people who consider you their slave. There are people who consider you their ATM. There are people who consider you their, their messenger. There are people who consider you their property, who are raising sacrifices on altars, who are consulting thrones of darkness to maintain you as an inheritance, to maintain you as a, as a victim. I am. A, I read this in the, in the book. The book is titled um, Former Occult in Christ. Former occult, now in Christ. This man was writing that there was a woman who was a prostitute. She was going out for prostitution. And she, done, she went to an altar to seek power. To say, I have been a prostitute for too long. I, I want to marry. I want to stop being a prostitute. The first man I meet tonight, I want him to be my husband. That was the deal that she made at the altar of darkness. They gave her. When this man came, took her home, after the night, she refused to go. She knew what she wanted. She had already done the muti, the witchcraft. And for close to 30 years, she was married to this man. But she one day, she said, we've been married for too long. She was required to renew that sacrifice every year. She became complacent. She said, no, I, we are married. We have children now. He can't drive me. So she did not go and renew that altar that year. And so therefore that year, the man woke up from the slumber. And the man asked her, what are you doing in my house? I took you for one night. What are you still doing here? The woman said, no, we are married. Well, we are married. We have children. What? I took you for one night on the street. How have I lived with you all these years? How did I have children with you? How did I marry you? I took you for a pleasure night. She did not renew the altar. There are people who are renewing sacrifices to maintain victory over you. To maintain victory, to maintain dominion over you. They are going to altars to, to, to hold you down. You must, 
You have a superior altar in the Lord. You have a superior sacrifice in the blood of Jesus. There are terms and conditions that can strengthen your altar, that can make you break out of every captivity, of every dominion, of every strange sacrifice that have been raised against you. You must know how to come to your altar. You must know how to strengthen your altar. You must know how to pray against thrones and altars of darkness that are manipulating, that are resisting you from coming into your new year. We see it in scripture. Seasons are released from the throne. They are midwife through altars. Seasons are released from the throne and they are midwife from altar. If you don't have an altar on the earth, that can correspond to connect to what is happening from the throne of grace, you are not going to be able to prosper. If you are not connected, that's why sometimes the, a lot of believers who are not, who have not activated their priesthood and they are not connected to an altar, maybe the altar can be the altar of a church, a local, a local assembly, and the altar of that ministry, the word of God is coming forth, instructions are coming forth, and you, your family altar is connected, is strengthened, so you, because there are several altars if you see, in Numbers chapter 23, Balaam wanted to stop Israel from going into the promised land. What did he do? He said, I want to raise up altars on the mountains so that I can scatter these Israel people, so that I can weaken these Israel people. What did he do? He went to raise up an altar. Anyone raising altars against you, all those who have raised up altars against your family and for 2023, all those who have gone to renew sacrifices and altar in your family, family altars of darkness, territorial altars of darkness, altars in your workplace, altars in your city that control, altars of darkness where they are raising sacrifices to nullify, to buy, to hinder you from taking your place. It's time to arise. I believe that as we listen to God, as we receive prophetic instructions, as we obey the word of God, we will break out of every altar and every throne that is resisting us. Let me tell you, he said, the violent take it by force. Pharaoh's throne, Pharaoh's priest did not want to release Israel for their new season. It was by fire and by force that they came out of Egypt. For Israel to live in captivity, 70 years, it was not going to be free. The kingdom of darkness didn't want to happen. It was by war. Angels were warring. Somebody was fasting and praying, was paying a price. It was what made Israel to break out of that captivity. Even though the 70 years had come, Satan wanted to turn 70 years to 100 years. The same way he wanted to turn 400 years to 500 years in Egypt. God said to Moses, uh, to, to Abraham, your people will be in captivity for 400 years. But I tell you, they were in captivity for 430 years. 30 years extra. 30 years extra. The enemy tries to change times and seasons through the operations of thrones and altars of darkness. Every throne, every altar, that wants to change your time and season, that wants to delay, that wants to manipulate, that wants to resist your place in this new year, the blood of Jesus is against them. The fire of the Holy Spirit will contest against them. You must know that this is why we fast. This is why we pray. This is why we hear what God will help us to do so that our place in this year, so that our place in this season will not be stolen, so that our place in this year will not be aborted, so that we will not be locked out. Remember, seasons are released from the throne, midwife, from altars. We are going to pray. A season has already been released for us. A season has already been released for us. A new year, not just an ordinary year. A year that is the third year in the third decade of the third millennium. That is clarity. When you see that, you know, pardon me to use this, 
to use this illustration. When you go to that place where you put money, what do you call it? Uh, it's not it's not ATM. We call it Kalo Kalo. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or you call it um when you go to the gamble, they put uh what do you call it? They put money on it and they will uh, pull it down. What's it called? Can somebody help me? A and then the, you see numbers appear. Seven, 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 seven. And then it will open up and money will come forth. What is it called? Uh, what is it called? Um, what is it called? Somebody trying to help me? Okay. When you see the lineup of the third year, of the third decade, of the third millennium, you've got to know that this is an alignment here. There is something. What do you call it? Jonathan is trying to help me. Yes, the machine. The sh yes, the lot machine. The machine. Yes, the lot. Thank you, Jonathan. Hallelujah. When you see that numbers show seven, 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 it, it means to say the it means the machine it means to say release. You see, it opens and the money begins to come out. When you see the numbers three, 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 when you see the third year, the third decade, the third millennium. When you see those numbers, you know something is about to happen. Like T.D. Jakes always said, you know something's about to happen. And if something is about to happen, you need to get your house in order. You need to get your life in order. You need to get your prayer on. You need to get your fasting on. You need to ask, what shall I do to take my place in this season? What must I do to make sure that I do not miss my place? Because let me tell you, you don't just walk into a new year. You don't just walk into a new season. You don't just walk into it. There are powers that are resisting it. The same way the throne of God and the altar in heaven is releasing things for you. There are thrones of darkness. There are altars of darkness that are resisting you. You need to know so you don't perish. There are people who are saying, but God said, but God said, but God said, there was a prophecy over my life, over 2023. There's a prophecy. There's a prophecy, but there's resistance. There's a prophecy. There are thrones. There are altars that are resisting you from being able to take your place, from being able to see that which God has spoken. This is why we fast. This is why we pray. This is why we sow seed, because there are some things that will happen. The Bible says, to your knowledge, add to your, to your faith, add virtue. To your faith, add knowledge. We're going to thank the Lord for the season he has prepared for us. For the year he has given to us. We're going to thank him because he is worthy to take the book. He is opening scrolls. He is, op he is breaking the seal. There is a seal being broken over your life. There are adventures, there are activities, angels are being released to come to you. But there are oppositions from the thrones and from the altars of darkness. Yesterday, before I came on air, I did a lot of praying, taking anointing oil, anointing strategic locations in my neighborhood, speaking to the earth, breaking Activities of darkness, territorial altars, opposed to my 2023, me taking my place. I took anointing oil, anointing places, going to places, going to the waters, rivers, going to, and I'm praying that every power opposed to me taking my place. In 2023, I raised up an altar of fire against you. You need to be violent. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violent. The violent taken it by force. It was by violent, violence that Israel left Egypt. It was by violence that Israel was able to leave captivity under Babylonian pasture. It was, you are going to take 2023 by fire, by force. You are going to learn how to wake up at midnight 
after you've heard this word that is being released, what you are hearing here is just to give you tips on how to pray. You are still going to have your own personal prayer. You are still going to stand up at 12 midnight to pray your way, to pray for yourself, to pray for your family. You are still going to go and raise up an altar. You are still going to know what you need to do to make sure that you are not locked out by the powers of darkness. I want us to thank the Lord for how he has helped us so far. The light is given to us. The revelation coming to us. The prophetic direction that is coming to us. That will allow us to be accurate. That will allow us to stand. That will allow us not to be walked over in this year. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus for your help. We want to thank you for the year, for the season that you have prepared for us in 2023. We come before your throne. We come before the throne of grace to thank you for the season. We come before the throne of grace. We come before the throne through the blood of Jesus to thank you for this year, for this season that you have prepared for us. We also thank you for the angels. We thank you for the speakings of the blood of Jesus from the altar of the Lamb of God in heaven. The blood of Jesus that speaks over us. The blood of Jesus that justifies us. The blood of Jesus that qualifies us to stand in this new year, to take our place in this season. Father, thank you. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Welcome once more to the new season. Welcome once more to a new year. Welcome once more to an adventure in prophecy in 2023. We're going to pray. Father, I thank you for prophetic directions in 2023. I'm one of the people God is going to use to speak to you. I'm sure there are other people that God can use to speak into your life. God can send you an angel. You can have a prophetic dream. But you are going to need prophetic direction in the new season. I want us to pray. Father, help me to hear the instructions. Help me to hear what? The instructions. If you look at every miracle that Jesus did in the Bible, there was an instruction. Let me say that again. Every miracle in the Bible, the first miracle he did, Mary said to, to, said to, uh, whatever he tells you, do it. Whatever he tells you, do it. And he said, bring the five, the, the water pots, go and draw. There was an instruction. When the warrior came to the prophet and he said, what must I do? He said, go and dip seven times. When the widow came to and said, I have nothing. He said, what do you have? He said, I have a little cruise of oil. He said, take that, go and borrow vessels. When you come into a new season, you need prophetic instructions. You need prophetic instruction. Moses always heard from God before he went to Pharaoh. I want us to pray. Father, help me to hear the prophetic instructions for 2023. Some of you, God will tell you what business to do. Some of you, God will tell you who to marry. Some of you, God will tell you where to relocate to. Some of you, God will tell you to, to resign from your job. You need prophetic instruction. Some of you, God will tell you to sow a seed. You need a, some of you, God will tell you to give away something in your house. You need prophetic instructions. When you come to a season, when Jesus came to the, to the grave of Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Hallelujah. When blind Bartimaeus heard about Jesus, Jesus said, come. When Jesus met the man at the, who would be sitting at the well, for, uh, at, the, at, at the river for 30 some, 37 years, he said, do you want to be healed? There is an instruction. I want us to pray. The instruction that I need for 2023, I'm not talking about a false instruction. I'm not talking about a presumptuous instruction. Lord, 
I want to hear the word that you will instruct me, the instruction of what you will have me do, of what you want me to do, that will help me to be accurately positioned for this season, that will help me to be accurately positioned for what you have prepared for me. For Moses, it was go to Egypt. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was a prophetic instruction. I want us to pray that your ears will hear it, that you will understand it, that you will find grace to obey it. First, hear it. Two, understand it. Three, you obey it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you right now that there are prophetic instructions for this year, for this season. Open our ears to hear it. Give us understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give us grace to obey. Give us grace to obey. Whatever instructions that you are requiring, help us. Help us at the gate of this full moon. Help us. This is the gate of the full moon. We are on the eve of the full moon. This is the first full moon of 2023. This full moon, <laughs> at this full moon, there will be a release of stars. The stars of men, the stars of nations, the stars, there will be a release. This full moon, the first full moon in this third year of the third decade of the third millennium, this full moon is, is, is signifying the fullness of time. Lord, help us to hear. Help us to discern. Help us to obey. Help us to understand. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. The next prayer I hear the Spirit of the Lord ask us to pray. We are going to pray for the covering of the Lord. It's a lot of warfare for this season. For me, bringing you this word, pray for me. Pray for Pastor John. Don't say, oh, Pastor John, praise the Lord. He prays a lot. Pray for me. Lord, protect him. He's a messenger of, of righteousness. He's a messenger of faith. Protect him. Satan doesn't like me. The kingdom of darkness don't like me. They know that God uses me to reveal things. They know that God uses my ministry to abort things. There are things that happen people don't know. If, if I share some of the... I, I just have to wrap a lot of the things that God uses us to do because you don't want to always say, the enemy doesn't like me. Pray for me. Pray for protection for me. Pray for utterances for me. Pray for release of resources for me. For the things God has called us to do. Right now, this message... I ought to be on on international network. I ought to be on on radios for people to hear this. We need hundreds of millions of people to hear this. This 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 message ought to be on global platforms. The accuracy of what we are sharing here. Some of, how many places have you heard that twenty twenty three is the third year of the third? Decade of the third millennium. How many places have you heard that? The enemy doesn't like a revelation like this to go far and wide. Share this post. Let people know. Pray for me. Give to this ministry and say, Lord, let this word spread. Let it be on radio. Let it be on television. We pray for protection. I heard the Lord say, pray for protection. In this season, pray for protection. When the season came, for Israel to leave Egypt, there was a decree that was passed for the killing of the firstborns, for the killing of the male seed of Israel. Lord, protect me. Protect my family. Protect my leaders. Protect my destiny helpers. I come to pray for supernatural protection against the fury of the enemy. Because the enemy knows every time the fullness of time comes, every time prophecy is fulfilled, Satan loses ground. Every time prophecies are fulfilled, Satan loses ground. Because those prophets, when Jesus died, it was prophecy fulfilled. Satan lost the whole earth. He lost the universe. When the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came upon the church, I will pour out my spirit. Prophecy fulfilled. What happened? The men that received that fulfillment of prophecy with the outpouring, they went into territories. They became, they became planet shakers. 
Every time prophecy is fulfilled, what happened? Satan is mad. He knows that that is going to cause him to lose ground, lose territories, lose people. We're going to pray for divine protection. As we go about 2023, fulfilling prophecy, fulfilling prophetic mandates, that we shake the earth. That we shake the nations, that we shake thrones of darkness, that we uproot altars of darkness. Let us ask the Lord that His hand, the full armor of God, will be upon us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this season. Lord, I come to pray for protection. The full armor of God, that as your people, oh God, as we go about in this season of posturing for prophecy, fulfilling prophecies. I pray for protection. Protect our heads. Protect our homes. Protect our children. Protect our spouses. Protect our destiny helpers. Protect our businesses. Protect us. I come to pray for the full armor of God. In the name of Jesus, the full armor of God. In the name of Jesus, I come to pray for the full armor of God as we take our place in 2023 to fulfill the prophetic mandate of God, to fulfill the prophet, the prophecy of this season, I pray that we will not die fulfilling these prophecies. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we will leave my Father, O oh God, to fulfill our prophecies. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I come to pray for everyone on the hit list, everyone on the death row for divine protection, divine deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for protection. I pray for protection from serpent, protection from night thieves, protection from the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus, every arrow of death, every arrow of infirmity, every spell of witchcraft being shot against your life, against you, because they see you advancing. They see you coming to the place where God has opened doors for you to fulfill prophecy. There are people who are mad at you because they can see that you are coming on the wings of prophecy. They can see that you are aligning to prophecy. There are people who are mad. I come to prophesy over you that no weapon fashioned against you in 2023 shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against you in this season shall prosper. No spiritual weapon, no physical weapon shall prosper. Be it a physical gun, be it a spiritual weapon, it shall not prosper. I come to decree and declare upon you that the hand of the Lord, the shield of the Lord shall protect you in the name of Jesus. You will not die in this season where God will be using you as a prophetic instrument to bring his will to pass on the earth. Open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. You're going to need this. I've been praying with this. The Lord gave us this word afresh on, on, on Sunday. Jeremiah chapter 1. I read from verse... From verse 18, verse 18 and 19, Jeremiah 1, 18 and 19. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, an iron pillar, brazen walls, against the whole land, against the kings, not just one king, kings of Judah. Now, kings are sitting on the throne. Remember, we said when you the thing that oppose prophecy, thrones and altars. So God was saying to Jeremiah, I've made you a defense city against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, said the Lord, to deliver thee. As you go about praying to fulfill prophecy in 2023. You need to pray this word into your life. You need to speak to the earth. Raise up an altar with Jeremiah 1, 18 and 19. Raise an altar, anoint the earth, and say, earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. For this day, the Lord has made me a defense city, an iron pillar, brazen wall, Against, 
This is the prophetic instruction. He earth, earth, he heard the word of the Lord. The Lord has made me a defense city, an iron pillar, brassing walls against the whole land, against the kings, against the princes of the air. Speak it to the earth, speak it to the heavens, speak it to the waters, speak it to the mountains. Wherever they are coming against you, make this prayer a daily prayer. Proclaim it so that whatever is coming from kings, whatever is coming from thrones, whatever is coming from altars against you, against your family, against your business, against your ministry, in 2023, they shall not prosper. This is the word of the Lord that he has made you. You say to the earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Hear, O heavens, Jeremiah, Isaiah, they prophesy to the heavens. They prophesy to the earth. You must declare this word to the heavens. You must declare to the earth. You must declare to the waters. Go to a water body and release anointing oil. Say, hear, O waters, this is the word of the Lord. The Lord has made me in this year, in this season, a defense city, a, bra a, a iron pillar, brazing walls against the thrones in the waters, against the powers in the land, against the powers in the heavens, on the mountain, wherever they are coming from. I am a defense city. I am a, a, a iron pillar. I am brazing wall. The Lord has made me so that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. As I go about fulfilling the word of the Lord, as I go about performing the counsel of the Lord, as my family, ministry, business goes about becoming planet shakers in 2023, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. I tell you that there are people who see you as a threat. There are people who see your ministry as a threat. There are people who see your family as a threat. There are people who see your business as a threat. And who will do anything to pull you down. I saw recently a lying spirit from the water left, entered into a young woman. And that woman was released to be to accuse me to, to people. And the Lord showed it to me and said, There's a light. And, 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 and I saw the gate in her life was pride. She's a Christian, she's a minister, but she's very prideful. A lying spirit from the water entered her and she's saying all kinds of things against me. I just look and I said, Okay, Lord, okay. <laughs> I've seen that happen. You need to pray. In 2023, Jeremiah 1. 18 and 19, over your life. Because you are going to be a planet shaker. When God spoke to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations. This was a new season for Jeremiah. This was like a new year to Jeremiah. God was saying to Jeremiah, in this, from henceforth, from this day, from this year, from this season, I have made thee, I have set thee over nations, over kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. God just made Jeremiah a planet shaker in this place. And when he made him a planet shaker, he knew that there were going to be kings who will come against him. There are going to be priests who will come against him. There are going to be powers who come against him. There will be altars and thrones. And so God takes him to Jeremiah 18 and 19 to put upon him a defense mechanism. Do not take this for granted. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, pray for protection. Pray Jeremiah 1, 18 and 19 over your life over your house, over your gate, over your office, over your seat, over your car, over your flight, over your going out, over your coming. Proclaim it at the noonday. Proclaim it at the sunset. Proclaim it at the womb of the morning. Proclaim it at midnight. Proclaim this word. Let the heavens hear it. Let the earth hear it. Let the waters hear it. Let the mountains hear it. That this is the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic word of the Lord over you in this season. So you are guaranteed of protection 
because the Lord has spoken it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're going to pray now against altars and against the thrones of darkness that have been set, that are resisting us. The Lord sent a young prophet to go and prophesy against the altars that was in Judah, that was in Bethlehem. The altars where that was diverting Israel. You, are, you, are, you have to let to prophesy against altar. He said, altar, altar, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> and as he began to prophesy, the Bible said the altar split into two. Every altar, every throne where men have raised sacrifice against your life, you must prophesy against them. Every throne of powers, where powers and kings are resisting you, you must prophesy against them. I want you to say, my father, let your hand rest upon me. Let your word be upon my mouth to prophesy against thrones, against altars that are resisting me in this year, in this season, concerning my prophecy, my destiny, my inheritance, my family, my ministry, my business, my position at work, my children. In the name of Jesus, my Father, let your hand rest upon me. Let your word be in my mouth to prophesy night and day against the thrones and against the altars that are resisting me from fulfilling my prophecy in 2023 and beyond. In Jesus' precious name, amen. There are thrones and there are altars that are resisting you from coming into your prophecy in 2023. Your prayers must be directed against thrones and against altars. The same way the throne of Pharaoh and the altars of Pharaoh resisted Israel from coming to the season that God has prepared for them. There are thrones and there are altars. I want us to begin to pray. Every throne and every altar resisting my prophecy in 2023, I bring the blood of Jesus against you. I come to silence the voices of altars. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every throne and every altar that the enemy have raised against me in 2023, every throne resisting my traffic of blessing, my traffic of angels, in the name of Jesus, let that throne be cut off. Let every power Every scepter, every rod speaking from the thrones against my life, I come to proclaim in the name of Jesus, let the throne be brought down. Let the throne be cast down. In the name of Jesus, I come against the powers of the throne. I come against every throne. Throne in the heavenly places. Thrones in the waters. Thrones in the land. Thrones in the mountains. Wherever it is, where the throne of darkness is have mandated a release, a resistance against me in 2023. In the name of Jesus, I come to proclaim that the fire of God will locate the throne. Let the fire of God locate the throne. My Father, let the judgment that is written locate the throne. Locate the throne. Thrones in the waters. Thrones in the land. Maka! Ilega! Miskatula! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, sit, sit on the floor. Let the thrones of darkness that have been positioned against my 2023, let them be broken. Let them be broken. Let them be broken. Let them be broken. Them be broken. Break the throne. Break the throne. Break the throne. Overthrow. 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 Every throne of darkness. The car. Makariaka, his katula, shkato besalia, he broke it. Ka, malagusi kandia, he broke it. Andalaya, every throne in the waters, throne in the heavenly places, thrones in the land, in the regions of darkness, where powers 
are contending against your prophecy. In 2023, I call for the blast of the Lord. The blast of the Lord. The blast of the Lord. Blast them down. Blast the throne. Blast the throne. Everyone sitting upon that throne. Let them be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus. Let them be silenced. Let them be cut off. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every throne. Resisting my place. In 2023. Every throne has messengers. Every throne has what? Messengers. Every messenger of an evil throne. Every messenger of an evil throne. When the th season came for Israel, the throne spoke. Messengers of the throne left. We're going to pray. Every messenger of an evil throne. The prince of Pasha was a messenger of an evil throne opposed to the prophecy of the new season of Israel. Princes are connected to thrones. You are going to pray. Every messenger of an evil throne walking against me in 2023, I come against you by the blood of Jesus. I come to decree and declare that the fire of God will locate him. Lord, let them be cut off. Let the princes, that the messengers of the thrones of darkness working against my prophecy, working against my family, working against my calling in this new year, let them be cut down. Let them let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, every messenger released from the throne, authorized from the throne to fight my prophecy, to fight my place, to walk against me, to block my path. Balak! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Surrender yourself! Surrender yourself! Surrender yourself! Surrender yourself! You messengers of evil throne! Surrender yourself! Kelagaska! Hiklantuyeka! Masko Pariaga! Hibolekadaska! Hibrekiaskula! In the name of Jesus, every messenger of an evil throne that is walking against my prophecy, against my calling in 2023, I come against you in the name of Jesus. I paralyze, I paralyze your activities in the heavens, in the earth, in the waters, in the mountains, in the regions of darkness. He galaka. When David was anointed to become the king of Israel, the throne of Saul was against him. And there were messengers from the throne to arrest him. There were messengers from the throne to walk against him. Every messenger from an evil throne that is troubling your life. Every messenger from an evil throne that is working against you in 2023. He from an evil throne that is working against you in 2023 they shall not prosper 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thrones and altars are the things that oppose new seasons. Thrones and altars. Thrones and altars. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, pray against the counsel of the altar. Pray against the counsel of the altar. Now, when Israel was going to the promised land, their new season, Balaam was hired to raise altars against Israel. And when the altar did not work, Balaam gave a counsel. A counsel. There are counsels that have been released from altars against your 2023. You are going to pray. I'm speaking by prophecy. I'm speaking by the spirit of prophecy. I know the atmosphere by which this word is coming. There is a counsel that I've been giving to frustrate you in 2023, to rob you in 2023, to stop you in 2023. Balaam, get a counsel to Balak and say, this is what you are going to do to this Israel. You are going to send people. You are going to send women into their camp. You are going to seduce them. Then their God will turn against them. There is a counsel that comes from altars. Ahithophel was a man of altars. And when he gave a counsel against David, he spoke to Absalom. Ahithophel, the Bible says his counsel was like that of an angel. When he gave a counsel, that counsel would have destroyed the anointed man of God. But the man of God got hold of the counsel. He prayed to God. He said, oh God, turn the counsel of Ahithophel to foolishness. We are going to pray. Every counsel that has been given at any altar against your life in 2023, Lord, turn that counsel to foolishness. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, every evil counsel that has gone out against us in 2023, every evil counsel that has gone out against our family, business, ministry, that has gone out against our cities, against our nation. My Father, every evil counsel that have been given from strange altars, that have been given from strange thrones, let those counsel be turned to foolishness. Let those counsel be turned to foolishness. Yes, turn their counsel, turn their counsel to foolishness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let their sacrifices be null and void. Let their sacrifices be null and void. Let their sacrifices be null and void. Every affliction, I hear the word wind of affliction. Every wind of affliction released from an altar. Every wind of affliction released from an altar against you in 2023. I decree that wind overturn. Begin to pray. I reject the wind of affliction. Somebody say, I reject the wind of affliction in 2023. Every wind of affliction release to bring affliction, financial affliction, health affliction, marital affliction, spiritual affliction. Lord, I reject him. That affliction overturn the wind. Let that wind be arrested. Arrest the wind of affliction. Arrest the wind of affliction. Arrest the wind of affliction. Every wind of affliction to bring sickness, to bring setback. Every wind of affliction released against your life in 2023. I command that wind arrested. I command that wind arrested. I command that wind arrested. I bring down the wind of witchcraft. I bring down the wind in the name of Jesus. Pray for the wind of the Lord. God has his own wind. Lord, release your wind. Let the wind of God go forth. For my 2023, the wind that will bring quails, the wind that will bring destiny helpers, the wind that will bring provision, the wind that will bring the wind of the Lord, the wind. God has his own wind. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the release of your wind. 
in 2023. The wind of God that will bring refreshing times. The wind of God that will bring breath. Let the wind of God, I decree a release of the wind of God into your situation. Whether you were facing a situation of drought, a, a situation of lack, a career, I prophesy that your end, your drought ends this year. Your drought ends this year. You will end 2021, 2023 on the high. You will end this year on the high. Spiritually, financially, materially, socially, internationally. Those of you who are due for international ministry. Those of you who are due for promotion. Those of you who are due for marriage. Those of you who are due for upgrade of anointing. I proclaim in the name of the Lord Jesus at the gate of this full moon, that the heavens be opened over you, for the wind of God to visit you, the wind of the Spirit of God to move upon you, the brooding of the Holy Spirit, the brooding of the Holy Spirit, the brood of the Holy Spirit upon your life, upon your home, upon your gate, upon your spirit, upon your bones, upon your land, the wind of the Lord, the wind of the Lord, it will empty your land of evil planting. It will empty your life. It will empty your house of evil gates. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the wind of the Lord, the wind of the Lord is coming upon you in 2023. The wind that will lift you. The eagle flies by the wind. The wind of divine lifting will locate you. It will lift you. The places that knew you before will know you no more. In the name of Jesus, Whatever was spoken to the earth to hold your feet. Whatever was spoken to the waters to ground you. Whatever was spoken to the heavens to limit you. Whatever was spoken in the mountains to keep you barren. I overturn them. I decree. Earth, earth. Lose and let her go. Lose, let them go. Lose, let him go. Heavens, let him go. In the name of Jesus, let the waters be silenced. He said, keep silent, O island, and let my people renew their strength. In 2023, every water body that was assigned to spoil you, every water body, every marine throne that was assigned to play the role of spoilers, they were called spoilers. They came to spoil. They came to spoil. In the name of Jesus, I decree that that water shall not be able to spoil. Instead of Spoiling, it shall be a blessing. I cut off the waters of spoilers from your gate. I cut off the rain of spoilers from your gate. I cut off the flood of spoilers from your gate. In 2023, I cut off the rains of the Lord. The rain that will confirm his inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I decree at the gate of this full moon that the dew of heaven will be upon you. That the rain of heaven will be upon your life, upon your land, upon your business. It will cause growth. It will cause attraction. It will refresh you. The rain, the rain from the presence, from the rivers of God. I call it over your life, over your home, over your business. In the name of Jesus, the rain, the rain of his spirit. And the river from the throne of God. In the name of Jesus, it will bring you blessings that cannot be stopped, that cannot be robbed, that will abide with you in 2023. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Let's pray over this communion element. Hey, the reign of God is coming over you. Refreshing times. Good news from far and near. Good news. Pleasant surprises are your portion in the name of Jesus. Every throne and every altar that was set against you in 2023 shall be disappointed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every stronghold that were operating from, from the thrones of the wicked, they shall be brought down in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we come before the table of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I redeem this communion element every communion that your people have presented, I decree them holy and sanctified. I decree and I declare the Lordship of Jesus over this communion. Father, even as we partake of this communion, we come to draw strength. 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 
spiritual strength. There are many of your people that need to travel in this hour. Strength to travel in prayer. Strength as we partake of this communion. Strength to travel. Strength to travel. Strength to travel. We have come to the birthing. Strength to travel. Strength to travel. Strength to travel. Strength to push. Let it come upon us. To push. To pray. And to break forth. To break forth in a in, in matter of hours. In matter of days. In matter of weeks. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes! Ekalia! Mezekuta! Maluke to Seketa! Lord, we receive the spirit of grace and supplication even in this hour. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we show forth the death of the Lord. For by his death, he destroyed the power of death. I want to congratulate you in the name of Jesus. I decree congratulations. Congratulations. Your portion in 2023. Congratulations from now forward. Not false congratulations. Congratulations. Heaven shall rejoice over you. Men shall rejoice with you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the victories that the Lord has given to you in Jesus precious name join us on day 7 as God begins to perfect what he's doing in this season shalom shalom